Cactus class. Today we are going to learn topic 13, which is the product and quotient rules. The product rule says that if f and g are both differentiable functions, then when you have two functions that are multiplied together, then you would take the derivative of these two functions by the following. The derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. Another way that this can be written is using the tick mark notation. f prime times g plus f times g prime. The way that I remember this is that it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. The quotient rule is when you have two functions, f and g, that are dif differentiable, then we can say when you have a function divided by another function that you take the derivative of f, so the derivative of the top, times g, which is times the bottom, minus the top, f, times the derivative of g, the bottom, all over g squared, the bottom squared. And you can also write this with the tick marks. So the f prime times g minus f times g prime, all over g squared. And there's a fun little uh, mnemonic device that um, hopefully will help you remember the quotient rule. So if the function in the numerator is called hi, and the function in the denominator is called ho, the quotient rule can be remembered with the following phrase, ho d hi minus hi d ho over ho ho. In mathematical notation, this would look like ho d hi minus hi d ho over ho ho, where d means the derivative of. So ho times the derivative of hi minus hi times the derivative of ho all over ho ho. Hope that was helpful. All right, now we just got some examples. With the product and the quotient rule, it just takes practice to get used to it. And a lot of the time your resulting function or your resulting derivative will look complicated, which is fine. All right, so we have a function y where x times e to the x. So we have two functions multiplied together that I cannot simplify to a power function. So I'm going to take the product rule. I'm going to take the derivative of x, since that's the first function, which is 1, times the original function, which is just e to the x, plus the first function, x, times the derivative of the second function, so the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. So you can see here that I have, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what order you have it in because it's plus. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And if you wanted to, you can factor out an e to the x, but you don't have to. So that's it, you're done. That's the derivative. Example two. Now, yes, I do know that we could um, distribute through and get a power function. That is one way to do that. But sometimes it, it gets really tedious and you don't want to distribute through. So you can do the product rule with ones like this. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the first term, so the derivative of x squared plus 3, so the derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 3 is just 0, times the second function, without changing it, plus the derivative of the second function, x cubed minus 5, the derivative is 3x squared, times the first function. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify it so I can distribute through um, each piece to get 2x to the fourth minus 10x plus 3x to the fourth plus 9x squared. Combine like terms to get 5x to the fourth plus 9x squared 
minus 10x. And if you really, really wanted to, you can distribute out an x. Now, the following example three, <clears throat> we can use the quotient rule. But sometimes you don't need to use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule just makes things more difficult. So I recommend if you can simplify the function into separate power functions, do that instead of doing the quotient rule. So since we have a single term on the bottom, I can split this up into two fractions. So I can split it up as 2x over 3x to the fourth plus 5 over 3x to the fourth. And using our negative exponents, I can go ahead and bring them up. And here, an x cancels. So now I have 2 thirds x to the negative 3 plus 5 thirds x to the negative 4. Now I can go ahead and use my power rule, which would be a lot easier and quicker than the quotient rule. So I'm going to multiply negative 3 by 2 thirds, and I'm going to multiply negative 4 by 5 thirds and then subtract one from each of the exponents. And after simplifying, I and bringing back down the negative exponents, I get a negative two over x to the fourth minus 20 over three x to the fifth. Now, sit, we can leave it like this, I'm totally fine with you leaving it like this, but it is possible that um, you may have to get a common denominator so in order to do that, I need to multiply the first fraction by three and an x, so that I get negative six x minus 20 all over three x to the fifth. All right, now example four and example five, we definitely have to use the quotient rule. The reason why is because you have more than one term on the denominator. You can't split this up into separate uh, fractions. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So when I do that, it's going to look like this. Derivative of the top x squared is 2x times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. 7 minus x cubed has a derivative of negative 3x squared all over the bottom squared. Now it just becomes simplifying. So I'm going to distribute the 2x through and the negative x squared through to get 14x minus 2x to the fourth plus 3x to the fourth. And go ahead and combine like terms to get 14x plus x to the fourth. And you do not have to multiply out the bottom. It's not necessarily, it's not necessary. If you wanted to, you could factor out an x on the top, but you don't have to. I'm just gonna leave my answer like this. All right, example five, putting the quotient rule and the product rule all into one problem. These get messy, so you have to be careful and watch yourself. All right, so in order for me to um, use the quotient rule, and I'm gonna use the quotient rule first because I have a function on the top and then a function on the bottom. And while I am doing the quotient rule, when I take the derivative of the top, I'm going to have to do the product rule for the derivative of the top. So when I do the quotient rule, it's, I'm going to get a result like this first. So this is right here, the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let me first talk about the derivative of the top. So I have the product rule. So I take the derivative of the first function. So the derivative of the square root of x is one over two square root of x times the second function, which is e to the x, plus the first function, the square root of x, times the derivative of the second function, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now I'm going to simplify. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, and before I distribute through stuff, 
I am going to go ahead and find a common denominator here. So the denominator here is two square root x. So that means I need to multiply this term by a two square root x on top and bottom. So that I now have e to the x plus the two, and the x comes from square root x times square root x times e to the x all over two square root x. And then I brought everything else down. Now I am going to go ahead and find a common denominator for the entire top, so which is two square root x. Since these are already multiplying, I can just put them together onto one fraction. Then I have minus this stuff. So all in one step, I found a common denominator and multiplied out uh, the two uh, terms. So the, I got the negative 10 because I had negative five and then my common denominator had a two. So I had a negative five times two. The x to the fifth came from this x to the fourth and since I had to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of x, the square root of x multiplied this square root of x to give me another x. So I had x times x to the fourth, which gives me x to the fifth. Then I had just e to the x, and there's the e to the x. So now I can go ahead and bring this two square root x on down to the bottom. And at the same time, I also distributed through these two binomials to get x to the fifth times e to the x minus 8e to the x plus 2x to the sixth times e to the x minus 16x times e to the x minus 10x to the fifth times e to the x all over 2 square root x times x to the fifth minus 8 quantity squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for like terms. I have an x to the fifth times e to the x and a negative 10 x to the fifth times e to the x. So when I combine like terms, and I can also factor out an e to the x if I want, so I get the following. You do not have to simplify this anymore. You are done. I hope you enjoyed the product and quotient rule. It just takes practice to get the hang of it, and it is two rules that you do have to have memorized for the AP test. All right, I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night, bye.